Things have been pretty crazy, haven't they? I mean, we just moved to Africa, just started a new job. Yeah, so there's been a lot going on, so I just haven't really had time to make another video. I had this idea. Why don't Marin and I help you with a video so that we can shamelessly plug our own YouTube channel? <laughs> Sounds like a great idea. Hey everybody, it's been a while. Sorry I haven't been posting much lately. I did have that one linked list video that I had recorded before, but we did move to Africa. I received some funding from the State Department. I'm a Fulbright Scholar here in Botswana, doing some work with another university. Don't worry, I haven't left Clemson University. I'm going back, but I'm gonna be here for a year. We're gonna be here for a year. <laughs> yes. So just to be clear, I don't work for the federal government and I am not working for the State Department. As always, the things I say on this channel are my views and my views alone, and here's a short statement that should be good enough for any lawyers out there that happen to see this video. <clears throat> this YouTube channel is not an official Fulbright program channel. The views expressed on this channel are entirely those of Jacob and do not represent the views of the Fulbright program, the U.S. Department of State, or any of its partner organizations. <clears throat> But yeah, so we live in Botswana, and the city we live in, there's a bunch of different ways people pronounce it. What have you heard? Gabs. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't plan that. Okay, so that happened. Okay. We've heard it pronounced Gabs. We hear some people say Gabarone. In Setswana, I believe it's pronounced Gabarone. But yeah, so that's where we live. It's in Southern Africa. It's very dry, it's very deserty, it's very cool, <laughs> both temperature-wise and awesomeness. It is winter. It is winter here. That was a little strange, moving from summer in South Carolina to winter in Jabarone. I'm kind of worried that I'm not in it. I think you are in it. I think I am. I think you are. I think I am. I'm just worried to like out of my face. <laughs> well, we'll find out. So the move has uh, caused some delays in my posting of videos. Don't worry, I'm still planning to make videos as, as I can. The schedule may change a little bit because our schedule has changed a little bit. But as the dust settles, definitely I look forward to making some more videos. But for today's video, I specifically wanted to make one aimed at beginners. And I thought I would get my daughters, Eliza and Marin, uh, involved and, and uh, get their help. Recently, you've noticed that I've made a lot of videos targeting brand new C programmers. And one of the reasons for that is that my daughters have been learning to program in C. And of course, I tend to make videos about the things that are on my mind, the things that I'm teaching for a particular class or whatever, and this happens to be what I'm teaching at home. And so I thought today we would just talk, the three of us, about some of the things that, that you found challenging and that you found interesting or difficult, whatever, the quirks of C that you have enjoyed or not enjoyed so much. And I wanted to do this because new programmers often have experiences where they feel frustrated or discouraged. Sometimes they think it's just them. And so maybe by having us talk about some of the things that you've experienced Experience. Maybe you'll learn something. If nothing else, maybe you'll feel like, oh, okay, great. It's not just me. <laughs> Everybody feels this way or other, a lot of people feel this way. So first of all, Marion and Eliza, tell us a little bit about your background as far as how you came to want to learn C. Am I forcing this upon you as some... No, not, not sadistic... at all. <laughs> <laughs> there are going to be so many outtakes on this video. Oh, like Carry on. For real hey, hey, I may just leave okay. this in. I may just leave this in the video. <laughs> Okay, Revenge. Um, so I just, I, I le started learning Java like maybe a year or and a half-ish, maybe? Yeah. A year and a half ago. Because Java is what they teach in high school. Mm -hmm. But because I'm not going to high school this year, I decided I wanted to kind of move so I could get ready for college. And since C is often talked about as like the hardest computer language to learn, I decided that one would be the best one to try to learn. And, and it's been, it's been rough. <laughs> I just do what she does, and she's doing, she chose C as like the one she wanted to learn, so I'm learning C too. So I asked both of you to think about the things that are sort of the, the biggest things that you've either struggled with or the things that surprised you about C when you moved to C. Yeah, yeah I made a list. Okay. So you made a list? Okay, let's... Let me get the list. I did not make a list. <laughs> yeah, here we can have my list, and then Eliza's list, which says, um, I'll wing it. So on my list, the first thing I talked about was in Java, you have a class at the very beginning of your program that everything is in the class. In C, you don't have that. You just have separate functions and you have a main function and stuff. I actually like that Which, better. I yeah, like the, I do. I like the C I way like better. The, the C way Classes is Classes always get in the way when you're trying to do Java programs. Yeah. I actually really like this, but it's a different way of thinking. You have to just stop thinking about your classes. I, I have cool. something to say. What's a pointer? That was the second thing. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, pointers. <laughs> 
they're like a race, but weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and apparently you use them in C, but um. Okay, so pointers, I actually, I've gotten the hang of them, because I'm farther ahead than she is. <laughs> uh, so I do, I understand what they are. They're kind of like, watch his video on it. That's what I did, but uh, basically it's like an address in memory, but you can I save stuff there, like an array, and it's pretty cool. Moving on from pointers to C, lets you do crazy things. In Java, it would normally give you an error message if you try to put... 500 arguments in an array that's only supposed to fit five, but in C it'll let you, and it'll just override your other arrays, and you'll spend days <laughs> stressing and trying to figure out what the heck is wrong with your program, only to find that you accidentally put two extra zeros, and it let you do it. <laughs> okay, so your item number one is... No classes. No classes. That's weird. But, you're, but it's, it's cool. It's I'm weird, but it's cool. It's cool. Okay. No. And this is actually, I guess, let me just chime in. You know, one of the things that I actually feel like for beginning programmers, I think one of the mistakes we make is jumping into object-oriented programming too soon. Mm -hmm. I love object-oriented programming. Yeah. Classes, objects are super helpful, super handy. But I feel like when you're first learning, it's really useful to stick to functions and statements. And it's, it's just a simpler way to look yeah. at the world. And so I actually like that. So I agree. Mm -hmm. there, whenever you start in Java, there's a bunch of stuff that you just don't understand. And you can't really understand like what mm -hmm. in the world public static void main means and why it's all in a class. And mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you're, when you're learning Java, there's a whole lot of, you'll get it later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And C, all you type is like int main for your for, for like hello world. That's all you have to and type. And you so. understand it. And you, you get it because yeah. it all makes sense. It all makes sense. That's good. Okay. And then so my second thing was pointers. Okay. So pointers, yeah. Pointers, if you are a beginning C programmer and pointers Watch are a little video. weird. Watch his video. Watch the video. That's what I did. Yeah. His, so video, his video makes more sense than him trying to explain it. Well, and I'm, <laughs> and I'm not going to explain it here. Go watch the video. But... <laughs> I do think it's useful to to give yourself a little time. You know, yeah. be patient with yourself. The the relationship between arrays and pointers is a little weird in C. It's very powerful and useful once you've mastered it, but early on, it can be a little mind bending and a little bit frustrating. The, what I had to do with pointers is to just not think about it, and you just kind of use them <laughs> like they're arrays, <laughs> and eventually they'll make sense. That's horrible advice. That's really bad advice. <laughs> Don't that is really no, bad advice. Back. Cut that out. <laughs> no, but we're, that is we're what leaving I did. it in. Everything stays. <laughs> but one thing I will add to that advice <laughs> is that you definitely want to make sure that you understand pointers before you get too far into it. I do sometimes no. see juniors and seniors who have been doing C programming, at least that's what they tell me, for <laughs> uh, two, three, four years, and they're still really shaky on pointers, and you don't want to wait that long. You want to make sure that pointers really make sense before you get too far into your program, assuming that you're in college or, you know, that you're in some kind of course of study and you're learning this. Make sure that if, before too long that you do dive in and figure out what's going on with pointers. Just fake it till you make it. <laughs> <laughs> Am I going to regret having you two on here? Absolutely. Um, At least my third thing. Do a video. My okay. third thing was about C. Uh, it doesn't. The Wild West. Yes, the Wild West <laughs> and story time. So I was working on this project, and it wasn't set giving me an error message or a warning or anything. It just wasn't working, and I was debugging it like constantly for like three days. It just wasn't working. Finally, I brought it to him, and apparently, I had an array that was only supposed to fit five characters, but I had tried to put five hundred in it, which resulted in it over like writing over the other array because it didn't tell me that like oh you've made a mistake. It just went with it. <laughs> and, and I did just make a video not too long ago about buffer overflows. So that's really useful if you're wondering about this. That video focused a lot on the security aspects of buffer overflows. But in this case, sometimes your buffer overflows just cause headaches. Mass chaos. They just cause behaviors that don't necessarily yeah. make a lot of sense <laughs> to you at the time. It was fun, so. but we got it figured out. And then the program worked after that. So just three days. It was sad. <laughs> Okay, so Liza, what do you want to add to the list? I don't really know how to like word this, but if you're going from one language to another, you know how to do it, you just don't know how to do it. <laughs> I um, don't I'll, I'll give an example. I'll give an example. I was making this program a couple days ago where you put in an argument, a number, and it makes a pyramid that's that number high made up of other numbers. <laughs> 
Anyway, it's not really important, but I didn't know how to get an art, take an argument in in C, but I had just come from Java and I knew how to do it in Java, obviously, because I had been doing it for like a year and a half. And so I was, I was just crying because I was like, I know how to do this. This is easy, but I just didn't know how to do it in C. So that's really frustrating. <laughs> If any of you that are out there watching have had that experience, I think that's actually a good sign because there's two things that we are trying to do when we learn to program. One is that you're learning the nuts and bolts of a specific language. You're learning how that language works, what it can do and can't do, and its syntax and semantics and all of those things. But the other thing that you're learning is you're learning, your, you're rewiring your brain to think like a programmer, to think systematically. And that thought process really is the same regardless of what language you're using. Uh, yeah. Most, I mean, that, that may not be true if you're using some of the more obscure functional languages or things like that, but if you go from C to Java, C++, Ruby, Python, whatever, the thought process, the logic that you go through to solve a problem, that's usually, it's usually very similar, but yeah. you don't know what functions you have, you don't know what classes, <laughs> what syntax, yeah. and so if you find yourself frustrated by that, that's actually a good sign. That means that you're thinking she like a pro- to me. <laughs> <laughs> it means you're thinking like a programmer, you at least know how how it's supposed to work. You just haven't learned the basics of the language. Yeah, let me tell you something that's a lifesaver is man pages. Oh my god. And the terminal. You can when just... I found those, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Where have these been all my life? Yeah, because I didn't I didn't know they existed. But you just type in man and then whatever the fun, like, whatever thing, you're, the trying thing to do. you're trying to do, like the function or something. And it just it tells you how to use it. It tells you how to use it. And it get, it sometimes gives example code. It's a blessed thing. <laughs> After having the hysterical fit about not being able to take an argument, I realized like, oh, I could have Googled how to take an argument with C and found the answer in like five seconds. Google is a friend. Google's a friend. Because, or else I'd be texting him like 24 seven from like home, he's at work. Be like, how do you do this? How do you do that? But I would like to say one thing about Google and about using the internet. <laughs> and that it's a great resource by all means, Google stuff to figure out how to do stuff but make sure that you're not using Google Stack Overflow, whatever your favorite place to find help on code, whatever it is, make sure that it's not a crutch. It's amazing how often I have students in my operating systems class <laughs> that go to my exam and in my exam, I give them man pages, but I don't give them an internet connection. And how many of them can't program without having an internet connection and Stack Overflow to copy syntax from? It's a little scary. So you do, you do wanna make sure that you can write code code on your own with without having to see some example every time. Make sure that you can look at man pages, make sure that you can understand them, make sure that you can think through how to actually create programs. Most importantly, make sure you know how to program without Google. Yes. But if you can like make sense of Stack Overflow, that's like <laughs> you just have a medal because <laughs> that thing makes no sense. That yeah, does. Stack Overflow. Stack com? Overflow makes no sense. I have no idea what's going on in that website. <laughs> You will someday. <laughs> it's a mess. Someday. It's just a mess. Someday soon, Stack Overflow will become It's just an unreadable huge blessing. mass of information. <laughs> so, Liza, is there anything else that you'd add to your list? I haven't done very much C programming. She's been doing C programming for months, and I've been doing it for like a week-ish. Yeah. About. About. <laughs> Don't let your sister get way ahead of you in programming <laughs> lessons because then she will act like it's your fault that you don't understand anything. <laughs> Even though it took her just this long to understand herself. As a side note, when you have twins, everything is a contest. Oh, Git wait, is wait, 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 awful. Wait, wait. No, 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 no. <laughs> You're not, don't say that on here. I actually love Git. Okay, I see, <laughs> I see the purpose of Git. Git is great. It's she just. She just doesn't understand. She hates it. It's a labyrinth. <laughs> okay, Git makes sense once you've been doing it for a little while. You just have to give it time. It's like any other skill, and it's actually super helpful. Yeah, just... I'm sure he has a video on it. He does have a video on it, I on think. On Git? No. I, no. I don't think I do. You have a man pages video. We will make a video on Git. We should, <laughs> we should make a video on Git because this is actually... This conversation is really useful because Git is one of those tools... And when I say Git, I'm really just talking about version control. You can use Git, Mercurial, Subversion. I don't really care. But version control, 
a la Git. It's one of those tools that students often think is overkill or I'll learn it later or it's not that big of a deal. If you learn to use it early on, it can be super handy even if you're not collaborating. When you are collaborating with multiple people working on the same code, it's super handy to keep everything straight so you don't clobber each other's edits. But even when you're working on your own code, the ability to keep track of versions and then if you break it, you can always roll back to a version that you know worked. That's a super powerful thing. Yeah. Especially when you're working against deadlines in your classes or at work. It saved me so many times. I just... will admit, Git is growing on me. Now, make files. That's actually <laughs> awesome too. Make, make files, files are also awesome. Are another one of these things. She, she but, didn't but get it. I just, I just want to, I think I still tried to do make a little before I had the f fundamental knowledge. I watched his video, which is like how to understand make in 60 seconds. But really what it was is how to make Eliza cry in 60 <laughs> seconds. The videos, um, they move kind of fast. It's, it's so fast. He should make another he video. He should make another one. It's a little slower. It gives you more than 60 seconds to understand it. Because <laughs> no one, no one who's a new programmer can get make that fast. It's probably true. He needs to remake that video. He really does. But in my defense, often I'm making these videos with just like, I've got a few minutes to record something and okay. I have to edit Touché. it really fast. And once and so, I understood make and I went back and watched the video, I was like, oh, this makes so much sense. <laughs> yeah, I had the same thing. Is that I got him to explain it to me and then I watched the video and I was like, oh, this makes perfect sense now. So really he needs it. to make a long video and then you can go back and watch the short video and be like, I am such a boss. I understand yeah. all of this. So the new title of this video should be watch my twins roast my videos and tell me how I should have made them. Oh yes. Which is awesome. So thank you for being here today. This is lovely. criticism. It is, it's, it's really helpful. Yeah. And this isn't the first time that people have said sometimes that I go too fast. If I go too fast, I do apologize. And let us know in the comment section below so <laughs> we can tell him how right we are. <laughs> yeah. Many of them already have. You haven't read the comments, but a lot of you have said, slow down, this is going too fast. Mm -hmm. I totally get it. But I have a day job, in fact, to, right now I have two day jobs. I've got one back in yeah. South Carolina and I've got one here. And then I've got a life that I'm trying to live. And so, yeah, so these videos are often edited very fast, recorded very fast, and sometimes they go really fast. So if it's going too fast, the upside is that there is pause and you can replay and <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, but it is what it is. Yeah, you have pause and replay and slow down so you can... Yeah, you can, you can play it slow down. You can turn the video, Make Eliza Cry in 60 seconds, to Make Eliza Cry for in like... In 20 seconds, yes, right? Yes, exactly! <laughs> there you go. But honestly, you don't talk as fast as like John Green. You haven't reached that. You yeah. haven't reached that. The gauntlet has been thrown down. <laughs> I've got to try now. <laughs> anyway, I wonder how much of this is going to actually make it in the final video. None of this is going to make it in the final video. <laughs> oh, this is a bad anyway. one for my for our no, this is channel. Fan <laughs> this is fantastic. This is the most Speaking fun I've had. Speaking of which, we have our own channel, which it is way nothing, better than his, and nothing to do with computer science. But so just all things. of you watching this video, and you're like, this computer science is so hard. I just want to watch videos about Africa. And us being funny in Africa. You can come follow our, subscribe to our <laughs> channel and follow our Instagram and our blog in the description box below. Yeah, he'll put a link to that stuff mm -hmm. down there. And there Won't you? Of course. Yes, of course I will. <laughs> if he doesn't, we will come hound him and make another video with him and yeah. waste his time. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll waste And time. roast his videos. <laughs> well, you know, I'm hoping that you will join me on some other videos in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have one planned. And, really? Yeah. <laughs> she has one plan. I do have one plan. He Stay have, tuned. He doesn't have a video on LLDB, which is... So these, you heard it here first. Yeah, LLDB. There's going to be an LLDB video yeah. from Marin. From me. That's because really exciting. I it's a good thing. It's LLDB. a good thing it's from Marin. If it was from me, you wouldn't hear about it until like four months later. But with her, you'll probably hear about it pretty soon. <laughs> anyway, Helpful. editing Helpful. this video is going to be hilarious because it's been <laughs> way less yeah, structured than normal. Yeah, there's going to be like a 15-minute blooper reel. <laughs> <laughs> the blooper reel will be longer than the actual video. But that's, that's true. thank you, Marin. Thank you, Eliza, for being on the video today. And yeah, thank you for joining me. And in the future, thanks in advance. Definitely, they've got their own channel. Please and follow up. Between please their channel, please between please my subscribe. channel, you'll get a taste of what we're doing in Africa, hopefully. And uh, until next time. Adios, chicos. Live long and prosper. <laughs> we'll see you later. <laughs> oh. Why is it just like the chair?
chair. chair. Liza just broke the chair. Liza just broke the chair. We need this. We need this channel to make more money. So, <laughs> if you're enjoying this content, please like, subscribe, and comment below. <laughs> because I've got to go buy a new chair for Liza. I can fix it. Thank you. We'll see you later. <laughs>